Welcome to the Nerd Stalker Podcast. I am Adolfo Ferranda, and you are? I'm Greg Boria, at Social Greg. <laughs> so this is really a special show here, Greg. Happy holidays, by the way. Happy holidays to you and uh, our uh, viewership out there. Yes, 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 yes. So what we're doing, uh, what are we doing here, Greg? What is this show all about? This is our uh, 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 Social Greg's and uh, Nerd Stalker's uh, top list of the year of 2011. Uh, things That's that right. we felt that changed tech. So uh, my number one is Windows 8 appears. Ah, <laughs> well, it yes. kind of appears. Yes. Uh, so um, you were at that uh, conference and they yeah. announced uh, Windows 8. And uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, I think it was a long time coming, but... The problem is, is that it's the beta version only for developers only right now, and then next year, September 2012, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I'm hearing March, maybe <laughs> or something. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, I think from what I've seen and what you told me offline, it looked like um, a pretty good game changer on their end, at least. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it looks like a huge chance for them uh, that they've that they've taken you know even with phone and uh what they're doing on you know as far as the operating system in terms of the ui i'll say um look like a sort of a hail mary pass a sign of a company that has sort of you know sort of nothing and everything to lose i guess that's right and and, and nokia followed right on their uh, back <laughs> right <laughs> yes they did yeah <laughs> next to a few hundred million dollars or something like that right yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I thought that was noteworthy for uh, 2011, at least, <laughs> uh, for the Microsoft crowd out there. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's, what, what's yours, my friend? All right. Well, I'll start it off lightly. It was actually from a company, a little thing that you you know, called Evernote actually is the company, but it's not Evernote, the product. It's something that they've uh, sort of thrown in as a, a feature, for, as a browser add-on called um, Clearly. And um, so I was a heavy user, religiously, you know, religious user, if you will, of uh, something called Reader on uh, Chrome uh, kind of thing. So you can go from side to side and you'll see this little R thing, readability or whatever. Um, yeah. And you would click on it, it would make a site sort of more readable essentially right uh would get rid of all the images and ads and ancillary sort of navigation things like that and it would mm -hmm. just be the content the meat of what you want to read right um sure uh, but it wasn't always available you know depending on the site you were going to it would sometimes show up and sometimes it wouldn't whereas uh clearly um shows up everywhere that i go and uh makes an attempt at uh on every page to if i want to try to read it in a legible kind of way sans all that sort of other stuff that i just mentioned it does really fantastic job of that you know so if i want the font increased because of my old age or you know <laughs> something like that um <laughs> it's just really nice you know it's a really fantastic ui it stays pervasive i've noticed if i go to other tabs and i come back to it it's still in the clearly mode it's a really great little uh little free freebie by evernote and i have to thank them for that it's uh, uh i'm using it all the time now i find my, myself using it all the time so how about you greg oh, how about your number two what's going on my number two steve jobs i we, mm. we can't go through a broadcast without mentioning yes. steve jobs yes. and you know he passed away on october 5th 2011 and uh yeah, I think even to this day, people are still quoting Steve Jobs mm. on um, on lists everywhere. right now. Yeah, so, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. I think they just. Um, I think I think I just read today in Turkey they uh, erected a statue for him. Wow, so is like, that where that was? I was wondering where that was. Okay, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, if you watch That's my Twitter wild. feed, I tweeted that out. So, uh -huh. so I thought um, that definitely was a game changer. Um, you know, hopefully Apple will. Uh, you know, rebound okay out of this and um, be fine. And I think their product pipeline is so strong that, you know, I, I don't have any doubt. It's it's maybe two, three years, four years down the road, you know, see where they're going to be. You, you know, know Time, TV's coming. Time Magazine was actually, you know, some people were, were predicting that they were going to pick him as the man of the year and he would be the first posthumous sort of, uh, uh, you know, pick ever, you know. Whoa. Uh, but they picked something like uh, I forget what it was, the internet or something like that, um, or the protester. I think it was. Yeah, the protester oh, was. The protester, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that was it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, great pick, I, man. I mean, that would have been interesting. Yeah. So I, I, that's that's my number two. Number two. So I'll go into What's number three. Number, number three. Okay. Or no, number two. I'm sorry, I'm already jumping You're ahead. Two. You're number two. Who works right, for sorry. number two? Um, 
So my pick is uh, actually a podcast, uh, one that I've stumbled upon from the guys that used to be This Is My Next, and now it's The Verge, oh. right? Uh, they have a podcast, Josh oh. Topolsky and Eli Patel, and another gentleman oh, who works okay. at whose name I can never remember, uh, called uh, The Verge Cast. I believe it's called Verge Cast mm. or something like that. And it's just fantastic. You know, it's uh, for gadget freaks. Uh, this is like a must <laughs> listen to. And not only for its like sort of content, really, but for the for the banter and sort of the, uh, you know, the chemistry that these guys have. Uh, it's yeah. really funny, funny, funny show to listen nice. to. I, nice. I cannot recommend it more than, than I am right now. But uh, apparently they do a live stream, too, of the show. I would love to see a video of the show. I know they occasionally do something at the uh, New York Times building, I believe, where oh, they do be something cool. in front of a live studio audience. But they do this uh, weekly yeah. show uh, also, which nice. uh, podcast that you should definitely listen to. Super funny. Um, also, you know... Um, What's of particular interest, too, is Neelai Patel, one of the writers there, uh, used to be, I believe, a, a lawyer also. So he's he's got a lot of information in terms of, like, this SOPA stuff and all these, you know, protect IP nice. sort of laws and, nice. and all, all this type of stuff. So great insight there, uh, good knowledge to have. They're fantastic writers, fairly eloquent, super funny, and super hip and on top of things. So, you, I, you know, you guys take a nice. listen sometime. I couldn't uh, recommend it more. So uh, probably one of the best podcasts my, that I've listened to. My number three. Uh, Android. I, I think Android finally came out of the closet this year. <laughs> if you want to call it that, uh, I, I, I felt that you know this was the year for the Androids. I oh, mean, yeah. you know, just the number of devices that have been shipped. Um, I'm not. We're not going to debate about sold. We'll say shipped. You okay. know, exceeded that of Apple, and then. Mm-hmm. You know, I think with all the, you know, from the Kindle Fire to all the HTC, Samsungs, all that stuff has come out this year. So it's really, you know, not only, you know, I think uh, a game changer, you know, from an operating system for, you know, Google itself, you know, and we'll go, I'll, I have some other ones below that. I won't really spoil it you right now, but, mm-hmm. but I think, I think Android was a big story this year that, mm-hmm. you know, definitely is on my list. Yeah, huge story with everything in terms of like, um, you know, uh, IP, you know, intellectual property kind of issues. Yeah, like you said, their market share. Um, really, there's two players right now, right? And they are one of them. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a huge, yeah. huge story. So, yeah, great pick. Um, yeah, okay. I got a, I got a lot of Google picks too here coming up here. Um, <laughs> one of which, that. yeah, it's like the Google like. show here. Yeah. Uh, my, I think mine would be Google Calendar, you know, um, I just finally found religion. I was a long time sort of Yahoo user and, oh, okay. uh, and everyone was using Google calendar and I finally, okay, what is this all about? You know? So I go over and, uh, yeah, just fantastic stuff. You know, you guys probably know this as, you know, as labels, uh, sharing reminders, uh, of particular interest for me is the ability to subscribe to other calendars, which is incredible. Yes. Um, I have a yes. daughter and their preschool, um, has a preschool calendar. So to merge that plus my oh, wow. work calendar and my personal calendar and other calendars, wow. you know, all together wow. in one view and to be able to turn them on and off at will with one click is just, you know, just incredible. And not only that, but that's available on your desktop, your mobile, you know, everywhere, right? On my, on all, on all kinds of things. So, um, yeah, Google ta- Calendar. Oh, yeah, and online and offline support now, too. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it makes it a no-brainer that for me. Cool. Well, well done, uh, Google Calendar. Let's go to number four on my list, the tablets. The tablets in 2011. Yeah. It started off with the iPad, yeah. too, and... Uh, Never stopped. I mean, it just started. I, I just saw, saw the Mambo line of tablets right after the iPad too. You know, um, you know, ending with the the Nook and the Kindle Fire towards the end of the year. So mm. I, I think tablet was a big, big, big um, uh, story of 2011. Yeah. And mm. um, you know, and then you know we got the short, tall, medium. I mean, Vente. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, tablets coming out there. So. I mean, I hear this debate of, you know, I like the 7-inch over the 9, over the 10. I don't know. Yeah. But it is the year of the tablet. I mean, it, it, we're all going mobile now. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's good. Without a doubt. Okay, my <laughs> next pick, um, which uh, is a sort of an odd pick here, it is Blogger, again, by Google. It's this uh, free product that's sort of been the joke for a long time and probably still is to a big extent of uh, blog uh, technology and platforms, but uh, they've just revved it with, uh, uh, with you know, sort of adding in a lot of sort of plus type of, you know, they've done that in their whole suite, but uh, they've, they've added, finally added a better 
better UI, better um, sort of CMS system behind it. They've always had a really good CMS system actually with it. Um, it's free, right? Um, has sort of unlimited support of, a, I think they've integrated with Picasa now. So in terms of images also, there's no sort of limit there. You don't host, you don't have to host anything. You know, it's all cloud-based. Um, it's super easy to use. They have something called dynamic templates now. Um, you know, Nerdstalker is using it oh, for now yeah. also, yeah. Uh, which gives it all, all these really beautiful views. Um, so, uh, and they're iterating on it from what I've heard also to fairly further rev it out. Um, so it, you know, oddly enough, Blogger is become, uh, is actually a, quite a, quite a huge platform, you know, if I think it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, you know, globally, right? I know WordPress is massive yeah, also, but you know, yeah. um, it's, you know, it is what it is. So no, good, good on them. I, ho I hope Google revs it out more. Come on, Google, push, push blogger more. I've got a sympathetic car for it, even though I think we're all going to be running uh, plus pages here pretty soon. All right. Next one up. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so, uh, death of Adobe flash. Ah, yes. So, um, you know, that was a big story this year. I, I think we saw it coming, but, but you know, when Adobe finally announced it, you know, and said, "Hey, we're we're jumping on HTML5," you know, they just they just wanted to put that last nail in. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and and I think they saw it appropriate. They would put the nail in. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I think yeah, that was a big that was a big thing. I yeah. think um, you know, I think we were all kind of. Not really hanging on there, but we're saying, you know, what's up with these yeah, guys? You yeah, yeah. So finally... It'd be great to see uh, Microsoft do the same thing, you know, with Silverlight, you know, to make that same announcement. Um, <sighs> because, so I mean, as we know, you know, Flash isn't really dead right now. There's going to be a transitional period until, um, you know, the browsers flush out things. But, um, you know, and then Adobe is going to be committed to supporting that, right, that, that transitional period. But I think everyone's right. seen the future, so... Yeah, good pick. Yeah. yeah, so my pick is Twitter. Uh, more as like a framework, you know, or an API. Uh, we've seen all over the world protesters using this uh, to send in images on, you know, whatever it is on Twitter itself now, is or TwitPic and a lot of other things. Um, but a ton of a ton of services obviously, you know, use uh, Twitter to you know to feed um, data into you know you use different type of Twitter clients or whatever and it's just really emerged as sort of this massive platform now for for not only um, for social change right um, and and not just social media I guess I guess that could be the same thing but like uh, you know government government you know assisting in government overthrows and things like that as a tool for <laughs> protesters and and such yeah. right um, so yeah. it's it's actually been quite uh, quite important and you see uh, you know uh, dictators and leaders trying to shut it down you know or the pipes that, that talk to it and this and that um, so or Bart <laughs> yeah yeah or Bart <laughs> right right so <laughs> We'll see what happens to them. You know, there's been a lot of debate about their their change, their recent change, and and what they're doing. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. You know what that happens. But uh, they've definitely been a huge pivotal part of the 2011 news for sure. So uh, my pick, well, yeah. Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I think with with the um, with also some of their sponsored tweets. You know, they're trying to monetize. So I think yeah. that they're making every effort to make use of their huge, huge. Uh, user base mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um yeah it's good luck to them for 2012 i'd yeah, like to see them continue all yeah. right all right how about well, you Greg? we're gonna continue we're gonna continue on with the uh i think the changes in the social world uh the social media world with facebook and google plus yeah so you know you saw a world of change in facebook this year you know timelines um subscriptions uh you know, uh, you know, the ticker on the right, you know, which I finally got used to finally. Yeah. Now I look at that darn thing almost every day now, you yeah. know, so it's, yeah. you know, you know, oh, Adolfo liked my picture. Cool. You know, yeah. you know that type of thing. So, yeah. so, uh, um, you know, Facebook made a really big change in, in their layout and I, you know, this, this new timeline thing. Um, Very cool. I, I yeah. haven't got on it, but you, are you on it yet? Yeah, I'm on it. I've, I made the leap. Yeah. And it's uh, okay. quite nice. I have to admit, man, that, you know, I wasn't really big on Facebook and then I saw Timeline and it's a very, very nice UI feature. Yeah. And it's yeah, a great user experience. So um, good on them for that, for sure. Yeah. And, and then we saw the launch of Google Plus. Uh, I think it's still beta, right? But yeah. uh, or is it? no, it's out of beta, right? Yeah. So um, or it is beta. I forget. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Google Plus, uh, that was another big changer. You know, yeah. they had a really big ramp um, in the summer. 
Um, it kind of flattened out, but you know, I mean, shoot, I mean, you and I use it. Um, we're 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 testing out the Hangouts, I think, a little bit. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think uh, there's some pretty cool features there. I mean, it's it's a little bit, you know, same but different. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. When you look at the user interface, it's a little bit same, but the way they rearrange your your circles or friends and stuff like that, I thought that was kind of a a unique cool yeah. feature you know that facebook didn't do so yeah i definitely yeah. see it as a more effective sort of messaging framework type of thing you know mm -hmm. things for like like you said like a video chat um chat uh messaging uh right. posting messages kind of thing to you know sure. um a small group or individual or something like that it seems to be very effective in that um and uh photos you know obviously it ties into picasso also but with no limit also which is quite nice um yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. it's nice in that way. It's it's definitely different from uh, a Twitter or a Facebook in a sense, you know. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it evolves also from from that. And from what I'm hearing, there is going to be some sort of evolution. So we shall see. My pick now is a uh, Mac OS X. So uh, you know, whatever you want to you know version of you want to run this year, uh, it's definitely the operating system. I think it's got the best user you know user interface. It's got the best user experience, in my opinion, and uh, has all kinds of features. You know, from you know uh, uh, productivity sort of features as well as sort of these home features. I think one of the best kept secrets is a little something called Front Row. Actually, oddly enough. Um, I have a Mac Mini, as I mentioned many times, uh, hooked up to my television and allows me to run this sort of oh, built-in right. media system, right? Media center type of thing. So um, <clears throat> instead of, you know, I'm not a gamer, so I don't have an Xbox to run uh, Xbox Medium Center. Um, so I get this sort of out of the box and, you know, with this little mm -hmm. remote control and this and that, it's uh, quite a nice solution uh, for myself uh, in, in that regard also. So, um, you know, no one's really, um, and it's gaining in market share also, right? Um, so and it's for sale now, right? As opposed to Windows 8. Uh, so okay. until there is another real, I think, um, uh, good solution out there, I you know I still see these guys as being the sort of the cutting edge and and nicest operating system available out there right now. My next pick, um, Natural Disasters. Was, yeah, was definitely, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, <laughs> that was the greatest. That was, Thanks, Greg. That was great, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, but in terms of how it affected tech, I think. Oh, you know, that's what you mean. You know, okay. That's really <laughs> yeah. what I meant. Anyway, um, <laughs> the, the Hoku uh, uh, earthquake tsunami impact and the yeah, Thailand all kidding flush, aside. I okay. Think, mm -hmm. I think those are the two things that really kind of affected the the tech ecosystem in a oh, way. Oh yeah. I mean, it uh, the basically that earthquake took down the uh, economy of Japan and affected all the tech there. Oh my god. Um, affected us as well i mean from cars to you know cars to uh, other gadgets and devices um it's still impacting us but, oh absolutely i i think um the you know the one thing i see that's kind of a positive it's really uh, rallied um the nation around you know this revitalization of you know of just you know making the next best you know making japan even better next time and so you know they're still reeling from that but it's mm -hmm. um, you know i wish them a lot of luck it's coming up on 311 again in yeah. three months so mm -hmm. and the other thing i wanted to mention the thailand flood uh, yeah. that affected our hard disk yes <laughs> you know if you want a hard disk yep. it's almost impossible right now look what happened to um, all these people at christmas yeah mm -hmm. we, we'll give it to the natural disaster is one of my picks for well, 2001 got you so uh, my next pick is um, a blog, actually, and it's called, and I should have mentioned earlier, it's called a Hack Education, and it's brought by uh, brought by a woman named, uh, written by a woman named Audrey Waters. Um, it's it's a fantastic uh, blog. It's as I said, it's about education, but it merges sort of a tech element to it. And uh, we, I think we mention it almost on every podcast that we talk about here, at least one of their stories or something. Uh, not only is she a great writer, Audrey, a great wa writer, but um, just the content that she pulls and the depth of the knowledge um, that she brings along with it. Um, I believe she started another blog too called Higher Education or something like oh, that, yes, Higher Tech yes, Education yes, or something yes, like that. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah. which sort of talks along uh, along the other aspects too of collegial kind of things and and mm-hmm. uh, online sort of certifications and and things like that in terms of changing the educational system in that regards also. Um, she also has a podcast, I believe, that she started with another gentleman that I've only listened to part of it. Um, it's a really long one, so they're in the beginning stages also of uh, flushing that out. Uh, really good stuff. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, checking checking out HackEducation.com, I believe it is, and uh, the writer's Audrey Waters. Uh, definitely, I'd, I'd say probably one of my one of my uh, best blog picks of the year. Yeah, no, that's uh, I, I like a lot of the articles you bring up in our uh, normal uh, – Tech Week podcast from mm-hmm. Audrey, so I, I, that's a great pick, Adolfo, a great pick. Um, okay, I'll go into my next one. Um, Google and Motorola. Who would have guessed? Google Rola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You put your peanut butter so, in my chocolate. My chocolate in your peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that sent any, everyone reeling out from the Android world to you know, Apple, I, I think. You know, I I think that was that was a great pick by Google, but it 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 sent a lot of question marks now around mm. the Android space. Right? Yeah, I mean, huge issue. You know, you know, forcing Samsung um, and, and HTC towards the Windows maybe as a backup. In terms of like intellectual work, but... property too, I mean, it was sort of a critical pickup yes. too, though, don't you think? Um... Yes, 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 absolutely. They they picked up a lot of IP on this one, and uh, um, just from a defense you know, perspective, you know. Gosh, you know, um, you know, and and you know, I'm not a lawyer, but with all the cross licensing agreements that Apple and and Google were, were doing with other people, you know, I agree with you. They needed to do something like that yeah. to not only pick up some valuable hardware but valuable IP along the way. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's one of my picks for 2011. Okay, my friend. Your next pick. My next one is yeah, like uh, one. Oh, a little ad, actually browser add-on that saved me during the holidays here. It's called the Amazon Wishlist uh, browser plugin. Oh, uh, really? It's, yeah, yeah, I know. It's uh, w- What's so great about this thing, too, and I know there's other solutions to this, but, I mean, let's face it, if you're an Amazon Prime member or, or um, you know, you want to you wanna shop via Amazon or, or – you want other people to see your wish list easily in one place, you know, with a lot of other, then let's face it, the Amazon is sort of the Microsoft of shopping or whatever, right, if you will. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this allows you to go to any site. Uh, it doesn't even have to be on Amazon. And you look at their product and you hit add to wish list. And not only that, you can set priority, the price. You could change the name of the thing, how you know, the quantity you want also. And what's awesome is that it'll direct you to the other, the competitor site. So it doesn't necessarily have to take you back to Amazon. They, Amazon is letting you do this oh, in the hopes nice. that you, you know, will just also buy some Amazon stuff, which you inevitably do, you know. So um, it's mm-hmm. super convenient, um, really helpful, uh, nice utility, and uh, and uh, has this weird social element to it as well uh, and commerce element. So it's very clever very clever uh, well done it's available on all browsers apparently on uh, um, mobile devices as well um, you know Amazon's just killing nice. it in the commerce uh, space so I gotta do an internet thing at least so uh, the the ICANN changes um, you know the internet corporation of assigned names and numbers and you know we all know that right um, you know they changed the uh, internet domains this year I, I think that was kind of big and so it, it but it kind of interrupted the whole ecosystem because everyone was scrambling to secure their name so that they don't get like amazon.sex or <laughs> things like that right, right so i think that was that was a big one for this year um you don't hear a lot from those guys and you know that was a big change to actually uh, allow other uh, dot uh, dot names to uh, show up on your um your browser now so that's yeah. a big I, I thought that was pretty big totally so my next pick um yeah. is uh, something that's called jquery mobile um mm. so what's so awesome is um there is a pre-existing javascript <clears throat> excuse me framework called J- um jquery which uh is already on uh, a substantial amount of web pages out there so what jquery mobile 1.0 they just released um has rolled out is a, a call to another thing that sort of piggybacks on top of jquery which will essentially turn your site mobile. And uh, by mobile, that means multi-screen. So that means it'll fit, um, uh, it's sort of 
scales, right? So depending on how big your screen is, it just runs through your browser. So on your tablet or on your phone, it'll fit perfectly. It'll give you touch right out of the gate. It'll give you form elements, uh, mobile form ele elements right out of the gate. It'll give you um, multi-device and multi-operating system support um, for all the major stuff, A-grade level, which means like super good um, you know, support level out of the gate, uh, out of the box, and uh, accessibility, ARIA, ac uh, something called ARIA, uh, accessibility right out of the box also, which is fantastic. This is typically a huge requirement in things like the enterprise or financials or other kind of things. Um, it gives you themes, options too, where you can like, you know, style your type of, uh, your type of mobile site. Um, <clears throat> and just a whole lot more, a whole lot more. There's lots of examples out there. Go Google uh, jQuery mobile uh, website examples or whatever jQuery mobile examples, and you'll see a lot of fantastic sites running this technology. All right. Well, I, you know, I, I have to pick some weirdo ones uh, in business like HP. <laughs> so uh, HP decided to get out of the hardware business this year. Then hired Meg Whitman. Then she said, well, we're back in the hardware business. And they decided to get rid of, you know, their OS. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. what what a reeling disaster that company is right now. <laughs> and, you know, hopefully hopefully Meg could, could uh, you know, piece Humpty Dumpty back together again. But um <laughs> This could be but, a worst uh, of 2011. Then pick. Then I'll oh, say it. Yeah. Uh, you know. I, yeah. I guess we could have we could have had a field day with that one if we had the worst ones. But um, I, I thought that was kind of a a, a, a noteworthy tech thing because you know uh, the HP is the number one you know computer company in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they they made when they made that announcement it was going like you know jaws drops. Yeah. So my other pick, man, was uh, HTML5 and the rise of JavaScript. Um, with a little nod to Node.js. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks to Im the improvement in browsers and the W3C getting their SHIT together, um, we have to thank them for rolling out something decent, being uh, HTML5. It's been a long time coming in the revving of HTML. Support for video, um, sockets, you know, um, just all kinds of stuff. And JavaScript, too, coming to the forefront because of the improvements in in browsers and and uh, and also in Node on the server side, uh, we're seeing you know the front end developer really shine in this whole picture, and it's a long time coming. So uh, yeah, thanks for HTML5 being able to handle a lot more uh, interactivity, and uh, it's in its early stages, and uh, but everyone's rolling out to production already, and uh, we'll see a lot more fantastic examples. My next pick is kind of like three Apple products uh, rolled under one here. So the first would be the iPad. So contrary to what Greg said earlier, really it was a one tablet race this year, and it was the iPad um, until December twenty fifth, where he was he stands I st he stands corrected because uh, well actually Amazon hasn't given any definitive numbers. Um, but uh, there was no rear, rear, <laughs> real uh, competitor to the iPad on terms of that price point. There was a rear competitor, that's for sure, uh, at that tablet level, right? I mean, there was nothing, let's face it, right? I mean, they have the line share. So, you know, regardless of the iPad not being completely revved up with a fantastic forward-facing camera and this and that, uh, or cameras, period, um, it's, uh, it's killed it. Right. So uh, also, I will have to say to that to that extent, the iPhone 4S. Right. Despite the initial shock of it not being the iPhone 5, uh, it was the best selling camera. Right. And Siri turned out to be the sort of Trojan horse uh, application in a non virus kind of way um, that is changing the industry. And everyone's trying to catch up now. Um, <clears throat> uh, and the camera, too, on the on the thing is, you know, fantastic, too. So. And then, all, and then finally, the final product I want to talk about there is, which is a sort of surprise, uh, quiet product that a lot of people don't talk about, is the MacBook Air, which has been a uh, sort of a sleeper um, success story for them in terms of, of like laptops, right? For the traveler, um, battery power, if you need a full fledged sort of computer system and, or an alternative to what I'll call the iPad, um, it's, it's the go to, I think, device to have now. So that was it for me. My final pick of uh, 2011 would be the browser Chrome. So I'm going to end with a Google product here. Um, and this is hard for me to say because um, I love uh, Firefox, right? I've As a developer, um, 
I had to be tortured with Internet Explorer 6 and uh, old versions. And when Mozilla came along, <clears throat> you know, after the death of Netscape and um, rolled out Firefox, it was like a uh, breath of fresh air, you know, and uh, a wonderful uh, browser with all kinds of, you know, great tabbing feature. I think they were the initial tabbing feature kind of uh, browser and this and that. But slowly it sort of slowed down and, and started eating up resources and becoming a bloated kind of thing. And then what comes out? You know, Google rolls out their own browser, which was, you know, everyone thought was kind of a joke at the time, but it turned out to be insanely fast now. Um, <clears throat> you know, a fantastic feature that it has is auto updates, right? That Internet Explorer is just rolling out now. So in the past, it'd be like, you know, hey, download and install the latest version of, you know, whatever it is, Netscape this or, or Mozilla this too, right? Or uh, Internet Explorer this. Now it's just uh, with Chrome, it's been tick, tick, tick. So you always have the most current thing uh, all the time, right? So the latest features. And what's fantastic about that also is their JavaScript runtime engine, WebKit, as I mentioned, is uh, really optimized super fast. And that's what allows things like JavaScript and HTML5 to to be so effective, right? And, and it's supportive CSS also. And not even to mention their sort of uh, their plugins, right? Their add-ons, which are fantastic. Um, so I, I have to salute um, Google for this just fantastic product. Well, thanks uh, for joining us again, everyone. I am Adolfo Ferranda. You can uh, meet, see me at, at NerdStalker on Twitter, or you can email me at uh, adolfo at gmail.com. And look for us on iTunes also. So, uh, you know, the podcast or the video, subscribe to us, please give us a rating. Look for us on uh, YouTube also. Do a search for NerdStalker TV. So, yeah, make sure to check us out there at YouTube. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, everyone, again. Me 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 me